G'day, Rob Paxavanis here from the Fishing Australia television series. In this webisode, brought to you by the Sunshine Coast Council and the Caloundra Chamber of Commerce, I'm going to go a little bit further afield and check out some of the fish that inhabit the beautiful Pummerstone Passage here. The Pummerstone Passage is formed by Bribie Island. It starts at the Caloundra Bar and goes some 70 kilometres south all the way to Moreton Bay. The boat ramps and facilities here are great, so you can bring your own boat, well, there's also boat hire and houseboat options. The Pummerstone Passage is a shallow fertile system loaded with a huge array of family sized fish and plenty of food for them to feed on. The average depth is only a couple of metres, a pretty shallow system. Anything deeper than that is considered a hole and a good place to start fishing. The setup I've got here is mainly for brim and flathead, but we'll catch a lot of other species. It's basically your classic two to three kilogram outfit, two to three kilogram line, coming down to a running sinker there, about 70 centimetres of trace. You can go a little bit heavier in the trace, four or five kilo if you want, for bigger flathead maybe. And then down to the business end, the circle hook there. Now, the bait I use, a tuna strip, mullet strip, pilchard here, any oily fleshed fish works really good. The scent carries a long way in the current. And if you've got tuna strips or mullet strips, something with a tough skin, just once, once through the skin. If you've got a pilchard like this, find a tough spot like the head or the tail, and put it through like that. That's all you really need to do because the circle hook is a very unique hook, user friendly. Now, the idea now is to cast out down current where the scent of that bait is going to carry a long way in the current and it's going to attract all sorts of fish to your bait. Pop it in a holder and you set and forget. The trick with the circle hook is to let the small fish nibble away. This attracts bigger fish which will engulf the whole lot. You let them move off and this locks into the corner of the fish's mouth. Well I'm all set up now and I'm getting nibbles. That means my bait's still there. The little ones are attracting the big ones and I just sit back and wait. What a beautiful excuse to spend some time in such a gorgeous environment. You can fish any time of the tide with this technique, but often the better fish bite close to the tide change. Just getting some touches on that now. Just getting some touches on that. You've got to resist the urge to strike because you can scare the fish off. The circle hook's turned in so it doesn't spook them when they bite. So a little fish can do their job by stirring up all the bait and making that burly trail and not panicking and scaring away the bigger fish. And, and if, you, if you suspect the nibbles have stopped or there's a little bit of weight there, you can just pull slowly. Don't strike, just pull slowly. And if a fish is sitting on it, you'll start to feel weight with a monofilament line. You've got a bit of stretch in it. And there you go, we're on. Look at that, too easy. Look, often they'll hook themselves, so the rod will just load up on its own. But that is just superb fun. Very user-friendly fish and you can Watch the world go, go by, you don't have to sit on the rod waiting for a bite, you can read a book, do whatever you like. The circle hook does the rest, it's set and forget. Now, a lot of different species in here, uh, but it pays to check the rule book before you come out because the rules change. There's bag limits, there's maximum size limits, which means if a flathead, for example, is too big, you've got to let it back. There's minimum size limits, of course. So you need to check all that, and that way you're going to protect this beautiful fishery. I've got a brim here, you'd be disappointed if you didn't get a few brim in here, um, or a flathead or two, and it's a nice brim too. They get a lot bigger again, but he's well over legal size. Beautiful yellowfin brim, and in beautiful clear water like this, um, when they're silver and in good condition like that, they're actually quite nice eating, as opposed to the ones you find up the canals and up the creeks. So you've got a beautiful clean taste to them here. So there you go. I'll get the circle hook out. It's got him in the corner of the mouth there. Let him go, and keep enjoying yourself. Fantastic stuff. Now some fish have a maximum size limit. For example, flatties that are too big must go back because they're breeders. So bring a current copy of the rule book and be familiar with the size limits and other rules so you'll avoid getting fined and help look after this great fishery. Whether you're a local or a visitor, it pays to have at least a few days up your sleeve to try this sort of fishing. There's lots of places to explore and you'll need a little more time to move about and practice this technique. These techniques also work great on mulloway, threadfin salmon, grunter and other species. These bigger fish bite best on a tide change at dawn, dusk 
or at night. So if you're a keener angler, one good plan is to do the water sports or family activities during the day and chase these bigger fish into the evening. I bet you you catch a few and have loads of fun along the way. Next episode, we take a closer look at outfits, lines, knots, and anything else you might need to know. For more info on holiday activities and accommodation, check out visitsunshinecoast.com. For more information on Pummerstone Passage, visit facebook.com forward slash fishing Australia TV. To see the library of Caloundra Fishing webisodes, click here. Come to life on Queensland's Sunshine Coast. Head to visitsunshinecoast.com.